In this video, we'll look at the basics of using Azure's Web Sites feature. In particular, we'll take a look at how you can publish and configure auto-scaling of sites. We'll also look at the gallery of web applications that are available for us to easily use, and then we'll walk through a couple of examples, creating a simple WordPress blog, and then a more sophisticated example that plots earthquake data using Bing Maps. To recap things we covered in the Azure Overview video, Windows Azure Web Sites allows you to build great websites using some of the most popular frameworks in just seconds and a few mouse clicks. You can use a free tier of service and build and host a website at no cost using just a basic Azure account. As you want to scale up, you can pay for more compute resources as necessary. There are many different ways to code for and deploy onto Azure websites. You can use Windows, Mac OS X, or different flavors of Linux as your development environment and seamlessly deploy your site into Azure. Using the Azure Portal web interface, it's extremely easy to provision, configure, and debug your website. Furthermore, there are many great performance monitoring features built right into the Azure Portal dashboard. There are a variety of different ways to manage your Azure website's code base, ranging from simple FTP to Dropbox integration or deeper integration with source control systems like Team Foundation Server and Git. There are also ways to integrate hosted source control providers like GitHub, CodePlex, and Bitbucket with Azure Website so that your deployment is tied to check-ins into those systems. Azure Websites supports a number of web frameworks. The ones shown here work out of the box. Classic ASP, ASP.NET, PHP, Node.js, and Python's Django web framework. However, you can also host a custom fast CGI handler which can then interface with many other kinds of web frameworks. One of the key features of using Azure Websites is that it provides painless and even automatic scaling as your web traffic load fluctuates. We'll now look at the scaling capabilities in more detail. There are three tiers, free, shared, and standard. The free and shared tiers are both multi-tenant and are shown in green. This means that your website and its associated code runs on a machine that is also hosting many other websites. The other so-called tenants that share a machine with you do not affect your code or the appearance of your website in any way. However, sudden changes in their load could cause temporary resource strain on the system, which would then also lead to temporary impacts to your website performance. Because of the shared machine, there are daily resource usage quotas on the free and shared instances. These quotas apply to CPU time, both per minute and per day, memory used, and bandwidth. The standard tier provides your site with its own dedicated virtual machine, which better isolates your site from potential resource contention by other sites. Note that this does not mean that you are suddenly burdened with managing the virtual machine itself. That is still handled by Azure for you, and you are still just coding up the website. However, because you get the entire virtual machine, your resource utilization is limited to the capability of the virtual machine, and there's no daily quota on your usage. With Azure Scaling, you can start with a single free instance on a shared multi-tenant machine. Then, as your web traffic increases, you can tell Azure to start more instances of your website. Those will still live in a multi-tenant machine, but your website will be able to handle more load. As your website continues to grow in popularity, if you find that the baseline amount of traffic to your site requires more compute power and you're running into quota limits, then you can move to using a standard instance. This gives you your own virtual machine and only your site will run on it. With a standard instance, you scale your website in response to traffic and load by allocating an entire new virtual machine and firing up your website there. With standard instances, you can also run multiple Azure websites on a single virtual machine that is dedicated to just your instances. For instance, you might have an image gallery for your research results, a blog, and a private content management system for your research team. You can put all three websites into the same virtual machine. This gives you more control and visibility into website performance, since only your own sites will affect each other. And you can look at them all via the Azure Management Portal. When you choose to put multiple standard instance websites into a shared virtual machine, you can still scale up with a simple slider in the Azure portal. All of your websites will be able to access and use new virtual machines as they're added. 
Azure can automatically scale your website up and down with CPU utilization. This is a really nice feature that lets you tell Azure when to turn on more instances as existing ones get too bogged down with load. When the load subsides, Azure can then turn off the new instances. This auto-scaling, as it's called, is a good example of how a platform like Azure can help you get more bang for your buck. By building your website on top of well-established web frameworks, Azure can automatically deploy and remove properly configured servers for you. You then have a much more direct connection between your compute needs and the dollars you need to spend on computing infrastructure. You might think that this is not that big of a deal for something like a simple blog or photo gallery, but the same pay only for what you use principle plays out across all of the Azure services and features. Azure Websites includes a large number of open source web application frameworks and templates. These range from blogs and discussion board software to very powerful content management systems, which can power an entire business or lab's knowledge management needs. Web frameworks like Django and Node.js are extremely open-ended and flexible and can be used to build very powerful data dashboards and web applications. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples of using Azure Websites. First, we'll look at creating a WordPress site. In this process, we'll see how easy it is to provision and configure a new open source web application, in this case WordPress, using the Azure portal. If you want to follow along with this video, you'll need to have created an Azure account already. We'll start by logging into windowsazure.com. We can either click the portal button here, or we can type manage.windowsazure.com. After typing in your credentials, you will be taken to the management dashboard. This shows all of the Windows Azure resources that we've currently provisioned. Don't worry if your list is empty. In the bottom left corner, you'll find a new button that allows us to begin using Windows Azure services. Clicking this button brings up a window which allows us to select the type of Azure service we'd like to use. In our case, we want a new website. So we go to Compute and then Website. Then we select From Gallery. In this window, we'll choose Blogs and then select WordPress. Now we click the next arrow in the bottom right corner of the window. On this next screen, we can configure our new WordPress app. We enter a URL name of our choice. Azure will check to make sure that our name is unique and not already taken by some other website hosted at azurewebsites.net. We will keep this option to create a new MySQL database. And here in the region dropdown, we'll leave it as West US. If you're following along with this video, you'll want to pick one that's closest to wherever you're located. Now we click the Next button, and we just create an arbitrary name for our MySQL database. It doesn't really matter, and the auto-generated one will work just fine. However, the region it's in should be the same as the region that we created the website in. Here we also have to click the checkbox to agree to license terms to use MySQL. Now we click the checkbox, and Azure will go and create our website for us. We can see here that the provisioning of the server and the configuration of WordPress is happening for us automatically. If we give this a little bit of time, the status will change from creating to running. Great. Now our website is running. The next step is to configure our blog itself through the WordPress interface. To do this, we should just navigate to our website. If you've forgotten the URL for your website, you can click here and then click the dashboard. Scrolling down a little bit, we can see the URL of the site. We can just click this link and it'll take us to our website. Because this is a default WordPress install, it starts up now with the configuration page for WordPress. We'll enter some basic title. We'll create the admin username we'd like to use to administer this blog. And now we create a password for it. As I enter my password, you notice that there is a password strength indicator that changes to reflect the strength of the password I've entered. Because this is simply a demonstration, I've picked a fairly simple password. If you're creating a WordPress site for your own use, you should pick something that is more secure. Here I will enter my email address so I can receive updates and notifications from WordPress. And here I can choose whether or not to allow search engines to index the site. And just like that, I'm all set. I can click Install WordPress, and WordPress will finalize the installation. Now I can log in. After logging in, I can create a new post. I'll save the draft. And with one click, 
I can publish it. If I click here, I can view my post. And this is what my blog page looks like. If we go back to the WordPress configuration page, we can change the appearance of our site very easily. Here I'll select a new theme. I'll click Activate. And now when I visit my site, I have the new theme. One of the differences in using Azure to host our WordPress site versus using a hosted in the cloud service like WordPress.com is that this is a full installation of WordPress and we can add plugins and do much more customization with this website than is possible on WordPress.com. Now we'll do a more complex example using Django, a Python web framework, and Bing Maps. Our web app will monitor the last 20 earthquakes and plot them on a Bing map. To manage the website, we will be using an FTP client. So if you're following along with this video, you'll need to already have a Windows Azure account. Additionally, you'll need an FTP client like FileZilla or WinSCP. To get started, we'll go to our Windows Azure management portal. After logging in, you'll see the management dashboard of Windows Azure. It'll list all of your Windows Azure resources that you've currently provisioned. Don't worry if there's nothing there. Now we'll click Websites, and this shows all the websites we've created. In my case, there are none. To create a new Django site, we'll click this New button. Then we'll go to Compute, Website, From Gallery. Here we have different types of websites we can provision. Django is a app framework, so we'll go there and select Django. We'll click the next arrow, and now we can enter a URL for a website. This has to be a unique name under the azurewebsites.net top-level domain. It's possible to later on map other domain names to your site, but Microsoft provides this domain for all websites created using Azure. I'm going to pick my Django 99. For the region drop-down, I'm going to keep it at West US, but again, if you're following along, you should pick one that's closest to you. Now we'll click the check mark, and we'll wait a little while for our website to get created. We can see on the dashboard that our website status is now running. We'll click on this and it'll take us to the website dashboard. Now we're ready to code up our site and upload it to Azure. To do this, we'll use FTP. But before we can use FTP, we need to configure the deployment credentials. To do that, we'll go to Dashboard and then click Setup Deployment Credentials. Now we enter a new username and password. These are not our Azure credentials. This is a new one we'll use just for using FTP to access this website. Great. Deployment credentials were set. Now if you're following along, you should probably write down that username and password on a sheet of paper so you don't forget it or store it using some kind of password uh, keeper software. If you ever do forget it, you can always click the Reset Deployment Credentials and that will allow you to reset the username and password. Now we're going to go to FileZilla and check out the code on our website. For the host name, we'll just paste in our FTPS, the secure FTP host name. For a username, now this is very important, it's not just the short username we typed in, but rather this entire deployment FTP user. And the password is the one that we just created. Great, we've connected to our site. And under site, then www root, this is the source code for our Django application. One thing we can also do is click the browse button, and that will open up a new tab, letting us see the basic default Django site that's been created. So this website is being generated by the code stored in this directory. As you may be aware, this video and the related videos are based on the Azure for Research training courses that Microsoft teaches around the world. The code for this example can be found in the complete course zip file that is available on this website. Inside here, under Day 1, Section 2, Azure Websites, you'll find the code that I'm using. If you were to actually take one of these courses in person, you would take the contents of the Begin folder inside Exercise 2, Begin, and you'd modify these in accord with the step-by-step -step instructions for this hands-on learning exercise. However, for the sake of clarity and brevity in this video, I'll just walk us through the final result in the End folder. So you can see, 
inside the end folder there's a manage.py that's used by Django to run a variety of utility commands and inside here there's a subdirectory called Django application this is where the bulk of the logic lies there's five files inside here and then a subdirectory templates and there's one more file inside there the underscore underscore init.py file is an empty initialization file that tells Python that this subdirectory, this folder, is actually a Python package. Settings.py contains the settings and configuration for this Django project. Let's take a look at that real quick. Inside here, the only things we had to modify are the template dirs and here we've written some code to tell Django to look inside our templates subdirectory for additional view templates. Next we'll look at view.py. This is a new file that was created during the exercise. Let's walk through the code. It contains a single function called earthquake. This function first loads a CSV file from the USGS and then it writes it to a temporary location. Then Using the CSV module in Python, we read the CSV file line by line and break it up. At every line, we convert the geographic coordinates into floating point values, and we store all of these values inside a list called data. Then we load the earthquake.html template inside the templates directory, and then we render this template, replacing its contents with the list of floating point tuples representing geographic coordinates inside the variable named data. Finally, our earthquake function returns an HTTP response object, which is then returned by Django and served up as a web page. Next, we'll look at urls.py. This is a file that Django uses to map URLs to actual functions. In this case, we added a line here that maps any URL that starts with earthquake and then has a slash to the earthquake function we just implemented in views.py. That earthquake function is imported up here at the top. The wsgi.py file, or wisgi as it's pronounced in the Python world, is just a boilerplate file that Django uses to interface with the underlying web server system. It does not need to be modified for this example. Let's look at our template. This is the HTML web page that is ultimately served up. It's a template because inside this web page, certain things like this particular template variable will be replaced by Django with the values that we've created and passed into the template. One thing you will note here in this template is that the function getMap, which actually uses the Microsoft Bing Maps JavaScript classes, has a placeholder for the credentials. These credentials are used by our JavaScript code to connect to the Bing servers and retrieve the map data. So we need to go to this URL and get some credentials. To sign in to the Bing Maps Account Center, we can just use our same Azure account credentials. Now we can go here to Create or View Keys. We'll enter Earthquake for the application name. The URL should be the URL of our app. The key type should be basic. The application type will set as education. Now we enter the characters for our CAPTCHA. This one's a little hard to read, so I'll get a new image. Much easier. The application URL needs to include HTTP. And now we have a key. Now we'll go back to our file editor and paste in that key value. File, save. Now we'll go back to FileZilla and we'll upload this code. Great, the file transfer has completed. Now we'll go back to our website, note the earthquake at the end of the URL, and we see it's an interactive Bing map. If we click the Show Earthquake button, now we get the pins for the 20 most recent earthquakes. 
So what we've seen here is that we were able to very easily have Azure provision a new Django web server for us, and we were able to upload our website code and have the changes go live. Now, downloading a CSV file and processing it is a fairly straightforward example, but these kinds of tasks are very common in scientific analysis, and I hope that in this video you've seen just how easy it can be to use Azure to create new web apps and services in support of your research. Again, for more information, you can always visit the Windows Azure for Research training site and get technical papers, as well as look at the training schedule of courses that are held around the world. Thanks for watching this video on Azure Websites. We looked at what the Azure Websites feature is all about, the various tiers of service and scaling, and we built some example sites. I hope you're now encouraged and excited to create your own sites using Windows Azure. Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available.